All right, my next guest is the editor of Refugee Resettlement Watch. Ann Corcoran, welcome back to the program. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be back. All right, well, a lot of things going on on this topic, particularly after last Saturday. There was a uh, 22-year-old Somali-American, Dahira Don, who went on a knifing rampage at a mall in St. Cloud, Minnesota. What do we know about him at this point, and what can you tell us about the history of refugee resettlement in St. Cloud and in Minnesota in general? Yeah, let me tell you, um, Minnesota has been the epicenter of the basically the Somali resettlement in the United States, although... I have to say, I looked up some numbers today, and and um, your listeners should know that you you get Somalis in New Hampshire as well, but they probably already know that. Um, Minnesota was years ago. The resettlement agencies, Catholic Charities, Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service, and World Relief discovered Minnesota. This is this we're talking 25 years ago, and part of the the interest in resettling Somalis there was the uh, that the welfare in Minnesota is so good. So first they went to Minneapolis, and then, of course, one of the things that, that um, Minnesota has plenty of are meat processing plants, like poultry plants, turkey plants, and that sort of thing. And they're looking for that cheap uh, refugee labor. So St. Cloud area has some of those types of um, employment opportunities. And so the Somalis started going there. And once they started going there as so-called secondary migrants, then Lutheran Social Services of Minnesota opened a direct resettlement office to St. Cloud. So the city has been getting refugees for a number of years now directly um, from Africa. Is uh, Minnesota like, um, is it a Wilson Fish state? No, it is no. not. Okay. No, no, it's um, surprisingly, no, it is not. Okay, for our listeners, if you don't know what that is, I highly recommend you go to refugeeresettlementwatch.wordpress.com and look it up. But what it basically means is that the federal government and the agencies that are getting paid by the federal government don't really include local government in any of this, and they just sort of drop them off. And congratulations, you know, you have all these technically quote-unquote children to take care of. All right, so the uh, other terrorism from last weekend was in and around New Jersey, and a gentleman named Ahmad Khan Rahami was connected to roughly 10 explosive devices, and uh, one of which injured 29 people. Now, Business Insider reported a few days ago that his family sought asylum in the U.S. as political refugees. Is that correct? That's what I'm hearing. Um, the, the story could have changed in the last 24 hours, but that's what I was hearing as of yesterday. And your listeners should know that the Refugee Act includes both the regular refugees, which are, the, for example, the Somalis that we bring here directly, um, and then it includes a provision for asylum seekers. And asylum seekers are people who got into the United States in one of many ways. They could have come in on a tourist visa and overstayed the visa. They could come illegally across the southern border, and then they apply for asylum. They claim that they are persecuted, would be persecuted if they were forced to go home. And it's becoming an increasingly big chunk of the refugee flow into the United States are what's called asylum seekers. And those who are granted asylum are then called asylees. They get all the same benefits that regular refugees get, which is all the welfare benefits once they have been asylum, um, asylum has been approved. Now, Homeland Security, I think it was Homeland, recently admitted two things. It might have been some division of Homeland. I'm not quite sure. But uh, in recent days, they admitted that, yes, ISIS is trying to insert jihadis in the refugee population, and second, that it's actually really easy to commit refugee fraud and basically fake your way in. Uh, and now the Obama administration has said that it wants to bring in another 110,000 refugees beginning October 1st of this year, Twenty to 30,000 of whom are likely to be Syrian. What are your thoughts about that? Well, it, we were expecting it, <laughs> that uh -huh. Obama for that in his final determination. In September of each year, the president is, um, it, by law, submits to Congress um, his determination for how many and where they'll come from for the next year. But here's the thing that people have to understand, because we have this tendency to want to bash Obama. Not that he, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve being bashed, but in this case, Congress has the final say because Congress will fund his proposal or not. These contractors that I keep talking about, whether it's Catholic charities or Lutheran social services or whatever, they don't have money of their own to spend on this. They can't place refugees in your town or my town without the federal funding for it. And so Congress will be appropriating the money or not. 
in the next few months. And you just posted something on Refugee Resettlement Watch um, dot com, WordPress dot com, about this for about Congress re-upping oh. this whole program. Congress is shameful. This whole business that we get to every year at this time where they haven't finished their budget work, you know, this is new. Congress didn't used to operate this way. Years ago, they operated normally where they got their budget work done, but we always get to the crunch at this time of year. They want to go home right now, and they want to um, campaign, so they want to get out of there. They haven't finished the budget, so they'll do what's called a continuing resolution, and the continuing resolution becomes a Christmas tree for all sorts of other things that they want to get done. So now they're going to do this. We are pushing for them to defund the refugee program uh, on this continuing resolution. Of course, that's a pipe dream. They're not going to do that. Uh, Paul Ryan is a big pro-immigration guy. So is Mitch McConnell. But um, so, so it's very frustrating. They don't, nobody hardly wants to stand up for what's right in this case. And they want to blame Obama for it all. I hear this from time to time from different corners that the federal government and the refugee agencies are targeting specific towns or states for a majority of these resettled refugees? i tell you, um, I hear that occasionally, too. Um, there's a certain, well, they're targeting in the sense that they are looking for, as a matter of fact, I'm going to write a post about this tomorrow because I found a great article about what they're looking for in towns. What they're looking for, for example, in a generic way, are they're looking for towns that are run by Democrats. They're looking for towns that have a mosque in them for example. Um, They're looking for college towns because they tend to have a lot of students who are going to go along with this whole idea. Um, But uh, but otherwise, there are some people who believe that they are in fact targeting certain political districts. St. Cloud was Michelle Bachman's district. And Michelle Bachman is now out of Congress. I'm not saying they had enough Somali votes to, to put her out of Congress or to discourage her from, from running again. But, in fact, that was her district. Likewise, they're pouring them into Trey Gowdy's district now in Spartanburg, South Carolina. But Gowdy could be doing something about it, and he isn't doing much. So uh, it would be real hard to sort of try to figure out exactly what their political motives might be in placing them in certain places. There's no constitutional power to use taxpayer dollars for resettlement. So what do the politicians and bureaucrats use as an excuse to spend, as, what is it, billions annually on resettlement agencies? Well, it's billions now. Yes, it's billions. We're talking billions. I mean, we're to- right now we're talking for the Office of Refugee Resettlement alone, $2 billion. Then the State Department will be another $1 billion. And that's not even counting all the welfare and educating the kids on the local level. You know, the cost to your local community for educating the kids, for their medical care, for all of that. That's just, those, those billion-dollar numbers don't even uh, begin to, ta- uh, to take that money into account. Um, the, the bottom line is this program, in my view, has gotten along for decades because they have created this aura of, that this is um, this is what Americans do. We we bring the third world in and we walk them into our into our towns. The average person has no clue. I'm telling you, the average person has no clue that Catholic charities or the bishops, for example, are getting um, 60, 70 million dollars a year for this program of taxpayer money. Yeah, no, it's just the public doesn't understand. From speaking to uh, Jim Simpson and yourself and and past interviews, I know that communities that uh, put up a serious challenge have a better chance of stopping resettlements that they're not interested in. Is that effective? Um, Do we have examples of where it's been effective? And what do people need to do to learn more about how to be effective at that if that's what they want to do? Well, I'll tell you what. When I first got involved in this nine years ago, we stopped at where I live, which is um, in western Maryland. Um, I'm not sure exactly what we did, except we asked a lot of questions then, and we demanded that the State Department and others answer exactly what they were doing here. Questions that every normal person would want to know is where are these refugees going to work, who's paying for all of this, and so on and so forth. And they closed the program here. I'm thinking they thought they were just going to shut down this one controversial spot. They are not stopping in places like Rutland, Vermont, which you probably know something about Mm -hmm. up there in New England. Um, The folks in Rutland are very organized in asking about this program and pushing back against it. And so far, they have not succeeded. Now, I think there's a chance that they will. Um, The people in Missoula, Montana, some people in Missoula, Montana pushed really hard and were not successful in stopping the program. The first refugees are arriving in Missoula. And I heard the other day, I read the other day, 
that the State Department has chosen 47 new towns for refugee resettlement. So there are a lot of places in the United States that don't know yet that they're going to be the next, have another have a resettlement site in their town. Okay, last question. Are any states or governors fighting back against this uh, federal overreach, basically? Well, you know, you have some governors like the, um, the governor of, well, I have to laugh. You know, New Jersey, Christie um, got out of the program or withdrew New Jersey from the program. Um, the governor of Kansas, a Republican, withdrew Kansas a few months ago. But the bottom line is, then they become basically Wilson Fish states, and there'll be some private nonprofit group will be assigned to resettle them and not have any, the state to government will be cut out of the process. So I don't know if they've helped themselves or not. Tennessee is fighting back. They've got a lawsuit ready to go, but they are Wilson Fish state, and they have a lawsuit ready to go. I, I hope they get it filed soon. It's a Tenth Amendment lawsuit. Um and it, and it could possibly be successful there. The Texas governor just this week has said that they're pulling Texas out of the program. Hey, do you want to just hear a little bit about New Hampshire? Do you have another minute? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I wanted. I looked up where you're get what refugees you're getting, and and maybe you already know. Mm-hmm. Um, Concord's had gotten eight Syrians so far. Um, over the years, the last ten years or so, um, you've resettled 643 Somalis there. Uh, the largest number are from Bhutan. And right now, it looks like they're focusing their energies, when I say they, the contractors on Concord, as opposed to Manchester. So Concord is, seems to be the lead uh, city there now getting refugees. Well, Anne, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me this evening. Well, thank you for having me. All right, we'll have to have you again on soon. You have a great night. Thank you. You too. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.